So now what we're going to do is create a couple of additional scenarios and try some transient protection um, strategies here. So what I'm going to do is create a child of this scenario, and we're going to call this just air valve. So we're going to try an air valve and see if it uh, has any effect. So you might have noticed back in that profile that there was that high point. Um, so we're going to try putting an air valve at that high point. So one of the things that I'm going to touch on now, which is really important when you're dealing with scenarios and alternatives with Hammer, is active topology. So active topology allows you to basically turn elements on or off um, between scenarios. So what I'm going to do is create a new child active topology alternative, call it AirVal, and assign that to our new scenario, active topology, AirVal, and then make that scenario current. So what this means is that any, any elements that we now add in the scenario are going to be inactive in the base alternative, or rather any scenarios that use that base alternative. So let me demonstrate here. So I'm going to go ahead and, in this case, create a small T-pipe here with uh, an air valve at the end. And let's move the label a little bit. And I'm going to enter some properties of the pipe. We'll just make it 400 millimeters and match up the uh, wave speed of the pipe next to it. And we're going to match up the elevation of our uh, air valve with the elevation of the node next to it. So our high point is at 165 meters. We're going to use that as our elevation for our air valve. So in the transient section here, we're going to um, enter 20 millimeters. We're going to try 20 millimeters as the inflow, air inflow orifice, and 20 millimeters as the air outflow orifice. Now I'm just going to switch back to our no protection scenario and watch what happens. So notice that the air valve and the adjacent pipe are now a gray color, which is basically indicating that they are inactive. So we'll see is active is false. So what this means is uh, we basically didn't touch our no protection scenario. So if we were to run this no protection scenario, it's going to act as if the air valve is not there. Uh, so this is really useful if you're trying different transient protection methods. Uh, you're going to be adding things in tanks, uh, air valves, and so forth. Um, but you may want to retain the other scenarios that you've already set up. So this is really, really useful for that. Uh, so getting back to the air valve scenario. So what we're going to do is uh, let's rename this here, It'll be a little bit more descriptive, 20, 20 millimeter. I'll go ahead and compute initial conditions. And this again is, um, is built off of the average day demand scenario. So it's going to use the same setup, which is to say it's going to be an EPS initialized at hour seven. Okay, so that's good. So let's validate the model. No, no problems of interest. And let's compute transient simulation. Okay, all good. So now let's go to the transient results viewer again, see if we did any better in our profile. Okay, so uh, recall before that uh, the maximum was about 220 in this case. So we did a little bit better, and let's animate it to kind of see the effect of the air valve, paying, paying close attention to this point right here, or high point. So let me pause there. So what happened is it cushioned the transient a little bit. So when the, back it up a little bit. So when this transient wave reached the air valve, air started to be let in. You don't see the air up here because the profile that we created didn't actually cover the air valve because the air valve is at a T. But basically what's happening is when the hydraulic grade drops to the physical elevation, air valve opens up, lets air in. Um, but you can see that the hydraulic grade still drops a little bit below the high point, so probably we're not letting air in fast enough. Uh, but it does help a little bit, so if we continue graphing there, we can see it looks pretty, pretty good, not too bad. But if we wait a little bit, just fast forward a little bit here. Okay, so right here we can see similar to our air pocket, or rather our vapor pocket collapse, we have a, an air pocket collapse occurring from the air that was let into the air valve. And that has a similar effect. It bounces back and forth. And uh, so we didn't do all that much better with the 20 millimeters. So let's go ahead and try, um, let's try a 40, 40 millimeters. So what we're going to do for this is create a new scenario. We'll call it air valve 40 millimeters, and we'll try 10 millimeters for our outflow orifice to, you know, let the air out a little bit slower so as to cushion, you know, make sure that those adjacent water columns don't 
come together too fast. So the key here is we want to make sure to choose the right, again, you know, the right alternative for that scenario. So in this case, since we're changing transient properties, we want to choose a new transient alternative for that uh, for that scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new child transient alternative, and I'm going to call this uh, air valve 40 m Okay, so in that scenario, we're going to choose that new transient alternative, and also the initial settings, or rather the uh, active topology alternative where we have the air valve active. And that way, when we switch to that scenario, air valve is active, and we can modify these properties without interfering with the other one. So I'm going to choose 40 for the inflow and for the outflow. And again, if I switch back to this scenario, you'll see that you know, it's retaining the 20 millimeters. Go to 4010. So we'll just compute initial conditions, compute transient. Okay, so now let's take a look and see if we did any better. Okay, so this is a little bit better, so now we're down to about 200, and if I graph this, I'm just going to use the bar here. So when it, when the down surge wave reaches the high point, it doesn't drop quite as low, and then if we go out a little bit further, when the air is fully expelled, it doesn't uh, expel it fast enough to, uh, you know, cause a, a transient in itself, so that, that helped quite a bit. Um, let's show the graphing now. So under the times histories, I want to show you something that's really powerful for comparing these things. So we've we've looked at the profile so far, but um, in the time histories tab, you can actually choose more than one scenario. So this little dot 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 button here lets you choose additional scenarios beyond the one that you're in. So we're in 40, the air valve 4010. So I'm going to choose the other one that we did, the air valve 2020, and also the no protection scenario. So when I click OK, what I can do is choose a point that I want to graph. So, for example, I'm going to choose pressure. I'm going to, we're going to graph pressure, and I'm going to choose the high point here, P7, J4. So it's at, at the end of the pipe here next to the high point. So when I choose plot, looks a little messy, but what you're seeing here is uh, on the same graph is the transient results for multiple different trials. So um, pretty quickly you can tell that the red line is from our no protection. That was you know, clearly the worst conditions. Our air valve uh, 20 millimeter size is the green line that did uh, did a bit better, and the blue line is uh, 40 millimeters, and that's uh, even even better than that. Uh, so we're we're getting there, but um, you know there are a few other things you can try. So what I'm going to do is, uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip ahead here to a finished version of the model where I use similar you know procedure to create a couple more scenarios where I analyze what happens if we add a hydropneumatic tank at the pump station and also a scenario for what you know what if we try both the tank and the air valve so you can see it's really just the addition of these two scenarios here so the hydropneumatic tank scenario has the air valve inactive and a hydropneumatic tank active so these hydropneumatic tanks tend to be um, sort of the uh, they tend to do the best job at, uh, you know, protecting against down surges, but they tend to be very expensive and uh, not always uh, easy to find a, a great location for them, but um, they tend to be pretty effective. So it does depend on the topology and exactly what event is occurring. Um, so we did an analysis of that and also another scenario where we tried both, both the tank and the air valve with the 40 millimeter setting. So I'm just going to jump ahead. Um, Actually, I don't think I, let's check if I've computed those results. So we can do something similar where we can actually look at all of those scenarios. Yeah, we don't have the other two. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you how to do a batch run. So if you go under the scenario manager, a little drop down here, batch run, you can run more than one transient simulation. So I'm going to do the tank and air valve and the tank. Run those as a batch. Okay, so now let's go back to the transient results viewer, time histories tab. Now we have uh, additional scenarios here, so I'm going to choose all these. This is going to look a little bit messy. I may, uh, let, let's take off the no protection here. Um, and again, we're going to look at the same point. This is basically the high point. Uh, look at pressure and see, see what effect it had. Okay, so same as before, but um, now we have an additional line here in blue 
where we have both the tank and the air valve together, and that seemed to do the best job in terms of minimizing the high and the low pressure surges. Um, so a little hard, you know, it's great to compare here, but, uh, you know, also very good to see that in action in the profile view. So I'm in the tank and air valve scenario, so I'm going to graph, or rather I'm going to profile, so you guys can see the effect of our, uh, our best design here. So I'm going to go ahead and animate this. Five seconds, so wave travels down. You can see, I'm just pausing it here, the uh, hydraulic grade here stops a bit, and is, and is uh, the reason being is that um, the hydropneumatic tank is located right there, and it kind of prevents that down surge from getting too low uh, too, too quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and play again. But it does end up dropping down to the air valve elevation, so the air valve does open a bit, but uh, you know, it doesn't have to open as much. And let's go ahead and fast forward a bit. And we don't end up with any air pocket collapse, or maybe you have a small one right here. Not too bad. So it does a pretty good job. So they work pretty well in tandem. Um, there is a small amount, you can't even see it with the decimal places, um, small amount of vapor forming at the pump location. That might be due to interaction between the hydrogenetic tank and the check valve built into the pump. And that happens right around here. Uh, so that's something you can look into, maybe try a different approach with a check valve, uh, something like that. It looks like that's happening on the upstream side of your pump. Okay, so that's um, that's basically the uh, main, uh, main two points of uh, presentations. Let's jump back to the PowerPoint slide. Uh, so in summary, a couple of key things, uh, key, key takeaways here. So um, you want to take some care in preparing for a transient simulation. There's a few things uh, you need to set up. It's not too bad, especially if you have water gems or water cad and you're already used to that. Um, you can get up to speed pretty quickly. Uh, but you do want to take care and make sure that everything is uh, set up properly because Hammer is um, that much more sensitive to, you know, making sure that the model is set up correctly. Um, the other point is to make good use of scenarios and alternatives. Uh, use them to your advantage. They're very powerful. Uh, if you learn how to use them effectively, you can uh, save yourself some time and um, really understand your results a little bit better. Um, and on that point, uh, always animate your profiles and think about what's happening. Think about how the waves are reflecting and interacting. Think about where uh, airs, air pockets are forming, vapor pockets are forming, and how, uh, how they're interacting and causing uh, problems. Um, and, uh, you know, use that time history option to graph multiple scenarios and kind of assess um, the performance of them.